Welcome, everybody, to Midday Magazine for this October 29th, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mailoff here. Welcoming into the studio some of our great friends from UW-Madison Central Wood County. We have Laura Huber with us and Olga Menza with us. Uh, we're talking 4-H today, and uh, thank you so much for being here, you two. Appreciate the time. Oh, thank you once again for, you know, allowing us in to share the information about, you know, what we've got going on in the world of 4-H, and I'm there's some exciting changes right now so yeah and uh, uh laura you and i get to talk quite a bit and everything and i think the audience is familiar with that but olga it's been a little while how you been i've been good thank you yes thank you for having me here today olga uh, let's remind the audience of uh your your role with 4-h and what you do and where you're doing it now yeah so i'm currently a bilingual um, bicultural 4-h educator and currently teaching in the marshfield high school and middle school very cool. And uh, thank you so much for putting in that work. Uh, we appreciate all that. Uh, we appreciate all of our teachers out there and all of our people that are able to do uh, a, a, an extension of that, if you will. Uh, pun intended. I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. Um, but I do appreciate that work and appreciate the... the the, the work being done on this front in every level when it comes to um, more inclusion and, and bringing more and more people in, uh, regardless of language barriers or any of these things, um, having more of this. Um, where I'm from, uh, I'm from the, I think, the greatest melting pot in the world mm -hmm. in Chicago. And, and, and we, it is, you pick up other languages mm -hmm. uh, organically uh, around there. And there's a lot of stuff that you learn that is usually often broken Spanish or broken this or mm -hmm. broken that or whatever. But you or learn. Spanglish. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, you, you get a lot of that. But uh, yeah. uh, up here, you don't have as much of it. So uh, having opportunities to bring in more of this is mm -hmm. fantastic. And, and I want to talk to you about uh, Juntos. Uh, Juntos, am I saying that right? Juntos? Yes, Juntos. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about what this program is and what it means. Yeah, so Juntos is a great program that is from the 4-H extension, and we are including uh, the schools for the parents to be also involved um, and for the students to thrive. So it's important for us, um, you know, to offer this in both languages, especially because there's always a language uh, barrier. And I'm actually getting ready right now to uh, do my first event uh, for November 21st at Marshfield School and talk about juntos with the parents and what the program is and just to let them know that um, they're not alone and we want to make sure that their voices are heard and so that's why i'm here um, to offer them all the opportunities for their children and um, i have a lot of you know background experience in that my parents not speaking english mm -hmm. And, you know, Spanish being my native language, um, there was like a lot of opportunities there that, you know, we didn't take advantage of mm -hmm. or that there wasn't someone there that we could trust or, you know, talk about those opportunities. So I'm super excited and passionate to be able to do this for my community. And Olga, uh, being able to do this for young people mm -hmm. uh, is it, so, it goes so, it's, any age, it's helpful. Uh, but to be able to reach kids at a young age when their brains are sponges and they're learning mm -hmm. so much more. And, you know, if you, if you look at a lot of linguists and talk to a lot of linguists, mm -hmm. uh, this is the age to really start learning those languages or start understanding those mm -hmm. languages better. So certainly for Spanish speaking kids, uh, this is an opportunity to learn more mm -hmm. in the English world, English language, which is insane. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine. If I didn't grow up in it, I don't know mm -hmm. how I would learn it. Uh, and I, I barely speak good English as mm -hmm. it is. And I do, I talk for a living. Uh, oh I can't imagine being somebody yeah. coming into this as that and everything. Yeah. There is that side of it that I don't mm -hmm. think we see a lot of. Uh, but right. it can be detrimental to a young mind when it's trying to learn and it has a language barrier that is uh, uh, keeping it from that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be uh, pretty intimidating uh, learning, you know, that second language and um, not only that, but not having like the right tools and resources and, you know, that the school sometimes don't have. So this is the reason that we come into the schools to try to provide, you know, um, better opportunities and for students to thrive. And um, not only are they learning like a second language, but they're also like learning the culture here as mm -hmm. well. So they're adapting, you know, to, to new environments. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even the schools that they probably went to in their own countries was totally different setting that it is here and um, different curriculums. And so I am so happy to be able to, um, you know, fulfill this space and, you know, let them know that I was also in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to, you know, get by this. Um, you know, although I was born here, I'm originally from Chicago as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So, but I moved to Nakusa when I was like nine. So I was mm. very young. And I do remember, um, you know, growing up in Chicago, all of our teaching was in Spanish. And so we were supposed to do um, dual language starting fourth grade. But unfortunately, I started fourth grade here. Mm. So then I was put into just all English classes. And it was very intimidating, very frustrating that um, I didn't succeed as uh, well as my other classmates. Um, because I didn't know how to read or write English. So it was really difficult. And so the school was not prepared for, for us either. So they would put us like in special classes. And I was even more frustrated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, having, you know, these programs are very beneficial for the school and the students. For some listeners out there, you might hear that story, and hopefully you empathize, hopefully you understand a little bit of it from your own mm -hmm. point of view, but I understand that the majority of people out there listening might not be able to relate to that, um, especially mm -hmm. uh, having an immigra uh, immigrant family mm -hmm. or something along those lines. Uh, Olga, you and I almost have the same path. Uh, okay. I, I was just a couple of years older than you when mm -hmm. I first came out here, and I was going to school in Nakusa. Okay. And uh, the audience may not be able to tell, but I had a bit more of a Chicago accent back then. <laughs> um, and I said my S's and my Z's a little bit funny, yeah. and they didn't they didn't quite mm -hmm. get that out here. Okay. So I actually had to take a uh, a class for my first year out here on mm -hmm. my S's and Z's to try to pronounce those a little bit better because okay. they didn't feel I was pronouncing them strong yeah. enough. Uh, and and I'm I'm you know born and raised uh, right. here and all those things, right. and even I had to go through something like okay. that so try to imagine it on mm -hmm. olga's level or mm -hmm. or a level of one of these kids um it I, hopefully gives you a little more understanding and an understanding of how how easily this can happen the uh, mm -hmm. kids getting lost in the shuffle of these things mm -hmm. and how important it is to have some people uh not only yourself but other teachers out there keeping an eye on something like this um what are the grades that you work with specifically um currently i'm doing seventh grade until senior year mm. yeah cool uh, a great age too to be mm -hmm. able to reach kids and stuff where they're not only they're still developing of course yeah. and everything but mm -hmm. they're also understanding a lot more yeah definitely and you know the, the reason that we want to reach the those grades is because we want to prepare them for higher education mm -hmm. so that's also very important and you know something that um, we have to break those cycles because usually our population the Hispanic Latino usually um, you know just complete high school if they're able to or sometimes as soon as they're you know reach 18 they want to drop out of school and just work and help their family members um, economically but I think that it's important to you know start breaking those cycles mm -hmm. and you know instead of you know dropping up from school to work instead why don't you continue higher education go to college um, and that way you can make more money mm -hmm. and have a career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, I'm definitely there to uh, motivate them and let them know that there is, you know, there is opportunity, there is hope. And I was, you know, in their same cho shoes and I, my parents worked in, in the fields, in the potato fields, cranberry fields, pickle fields. I also did. Mm -hmm. And I did that work until I was 15. And, and I finally said, oh, you know, I want to go and pursue school and, um, a college education and um, actually I'm the middle of 12 children <laughs> so my elder siblings when they were graduating high school some graduated and some dropped out and they were working so I, I feel like you know the the school staff felt like oh well she's just gonna graduate and continue working with her family and and you know in the farm and stuff but I had other dreams I had other hopes and so I struggled by myself to, you know, make it happen. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping that I'm able to provide these, you know, students the, the correct tools and resources and whatever they need to, to be able to get a higher education. Giving them options mm -hmm. that maybe you or I might not have had, uh, avenues Definitely. to take those options. Now, if they yeah, want to continue exactly. the family business mm -hmm. after high school, that's great, mm -hmm. more power to them. Yeah. But at least giving them the option that, hey, yeah. there are other paths, there are other right. ways you can go. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. And, and uh, the research shows that this is an important subject, especially in the Latino company. I, I think that there's mm -hmm. a lot of families out there that are hearing this and can relate to a lot of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But uh, specifically in the uh, Latino culture, there, mm -hmm. this is something that happens quite a bit. I know I saw it growing up. I'm mm -hmm. sure you did, too. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that has certainly affected our area here in central Wisconsin. Yes. Definitely. So that's another part of the program, uh, just giving kids this avenue, this opportunity, and, and letting them even know about it. Yeah, definitely, because a lot of the children are also, um, you know, immigrants, so they feel like they don't have um, pathways to 
uh, college education, but there is a lot of ways that mm -hmm. we can help them with scholarships and financially. And uh, this program is something that is a partnership between Extension and our, our, our education uh, system out there, our schools out there and everything, right? Yeah. Yes, mm. that is correct. So when it comes to that, you've got the, the full power of Extension and this and all that knowledge mm -hmm. going into a program like this. That is pretty cool. That, yeah. that is a really powerful program right there. One of the things that we found um, in starting the work was that it really brought awareness to um, teachers mm -hmm. in Marshfield School District um, because they are so busy serving so many students, especially in middle school and high school, right? They don't mm -hmm. just have a class of 24. They've got all sorts of kids that are coming through. And really opening the teacher's eyes and the administrative support staff eyes to what the challenges are. And one of the most important challenges, I think, for all of us to be aware of is if um, parents don't speak the dominant language of the school, mm -hmm. the children, it's almost like they have to live in two different worlds. Mm -hmm. They have the school world where parents don't feel comfortable or don't feel welcome, and then the home world. And so um, in working with the school district, trying to help them understand how they can make the schools a more welcoming place for the families mm -hmm. to make sure that, um, you know, the whole child child feels supported both in home and at school that you know school really should be a place that the entire family is welcome um, when you have English speaking parents and they've mm -hmm. you know see bad grades something you know it's easy to send off an email or to call the teacher and say tell me more what can I do conferences or personal mm -hmm. connections it's much more difficult for families with a language barrier to do that and it can be so intimidating for mm -hmm. those parents to walk into a school um, and say hey yeah. I need to talk to somebody whether it's a counselor for emotional needs mm -hmm. whether it's specific teachers with classroom needs um, so that's one of the things that I'm really um, proud of was changes that have made have been made up there in Marshfield mm -hmm. because that awareness has begun mm -hmm. um, and so that's just a part of that mm -hmm. that first program that Olga mentioned is let's do a program to get parents to walk into the school to know mm -hmm. that they are invited into the school yeah. um, to get things going yeah. so it, it, if it makes uh, if it's something that enhances and makes things stronger for our kids and our families um, it, it's something that affects all of uh, mm -hmm. facets uh, you know these are kids that are going to grow up and become mm -hmm. and contribute to society be taxpayers and all of that their parents understanding the school system a little bit better when their kids mm -hmm. are out of school and there there's an uh, amendment uh, up on their ballot or something and understanding and caring about that more there's so many layers to mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. this things that we can maybe not even thinking about uh, when it comes to it. And, and when it comes to that, there's another uh, side of this too that I just wanted to touch on. And it's certainly not necessarily uh, what the, the purpose of the program or the, the need of the program. But uh, for those that haven't been paying attention, there's no language bigger in the world than Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's the most popular language by far and away in the whole world. Mm -hmm. The idea of more kids that don't know Spanish, understanding a little more Spanish, is not only great for this situation and that, but it could be great for them for the rest of their lives. Uh, the, the, the language is only getting bigger and bigger and becoming more and more a part of not only our culture, but culture around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, you want your kids to be a, uh, be a little bit more um, together with that and understand that language a little bit more and for them not to have a barrier either when, with what we're talking mm -hmm. about. So that can only enhance this as well. Uh, both parties, uh, both people really benefit from something like this. And not for nothing, Spanish is a beautiful language. It's a really pretty <laughs> language, everybody. It's a really good one to learn. Thank uh, you. So schools are really different across, um, not only across the state of Wisconsin, but across the world. So like understanding how the school system works here and what graduation requirements are and what why graduation matters, super important. So that's mm -hmm. the exactly what um, Juntos is all about. But my niece and nephew go to school down in um, southeastern Wisconsin and there they're starting Spanish in first grade mm -hmm. right and it's like what an amazing piece mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the things that I would love to start here here <laughs> locally right mm -hmm. because I think wow um, for student one of the issues that a lot of our students have had is loneliness isolation. Um, so in their classrooms, really feeling disconnected from their peers. So how mm. cool would it be if our young people started learning another language when they were much younger, when the brain is much um, more adept mm -hmm. at 
you know, pulling in a second or even a third language. I think that would be an amazing yeah. change. This is my dream world. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and you're not living there alone. I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you on that. Uh, you know, we, we also talk, uh, especially this time of year in an election year and everything, uh, we do a lot of interviews and a lot of conversations with our, our candidates and representatives. And one of the things I ask each one of them and I talk to them about is poll after poll and study after study is showing that we are done with the divisiveness mm-hmm. of our country. We want to come together more. Mm -hmm. We want to be brought together more. Um, Something that we've talked about in 4-H, we've talked about with other members of Extension, you know, there's different things that bring us together. Education, knowledge, food brings us together, and language. Mm -hmm. Language brings us together. And it has a a greater opportunity than any of these things also to separate us. Mm -hmm. The more we have of the classes like this or programs like Mm -hmm. this, the more we are together, the more we get to know each other better and understand that we have more in common than not and brings us together a little bit more, Mm -hmm. gets us closer closer and closer to that unified uh, thing that the, us and the rest of the country really wants. Yeah. Um, that part is, is an awful nice uh, side benefit yeah. of, yeah, of something definitely. like this as well. Uh, I appreciate and, it. And Olga, when it, when it comes to this program, is there anything we haven't touched on? Is there anything else about it that you wanted to make sure that the audience knows about this great program? Mm, well, we are trying to expand it also to like Nakusa schools and Wisconsin Rapids. So hopefully pretty soon by so, yeah. January we can extend. I, I'm used to Laura and I having <laughs> chemistry, but we haven't worked together in a while. Yeah, that is where right. I wanted to go with this uh-huh. uh, because I, I heard you mention that you're doing this in Marshfield. Mm-hmm. I know we got a lot of local schools yeah, here that I, could definitely use something like that. So you are definitely. open to doing this in other schools. Yes, we already started conversations. So Excellent. Hopefully Excellent. we can get our feet yeah. in there soon. Here's but, hoping uh, yeah. and, and, and pulling for it because yeah. not only could it benefit our community and our kids, uh, but uh, I, I like the idea of uh, seeing you more. You have to be in the yeah. studio more here and <laughs> right? everything. That'd be great. Yes. Thank you. And we're speaking with Laura and Olga from uh, UW Extension's 4-H program. And Laura, uh, this uh, this program, Untos, is 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 a wonderful uh, program. And it, it feels like a real, uh, I keep using the word extension, I can't help it. But extension of what you guys do at 4-H, it really goes hand in hand with the work. Yeah, so 4-H is really all about developing whole people, you know, whole, young people into the best whole person that they can yeah. possibly be. We talk a lot about life skill development and those life skills, we often think about the very specific hard skills like how to carve wood or, you know, how to decorate a cake, but that's really not the piece that we're working on. We're using those as pathways for young people to learn problem solving and communication and um, empathy and just like all of those soft skills, if you will. Um, Because really what we are concerned about is that the young people of today grow into the adults of tomorrow that have all of the skills that they need to really be fantastic happy, contributing members of our societies, right? Um, And so we are working with everybody from five-year-old kindergarten through a year past their high school graduation. Um, We have all sorts of different programs that we run. Um, Some are happening at the club level. Some are happening in schools. Some are happening at the county level. You know, it's, it's all over the place. And we often do target special groups that might not Um, have easy access to our club program. Um, That said, we do have a thriving club program. And here in Southwood County, we have two really strong clubs, the Wittenberg Workers in Nakusa and Snyder 4-H Club here in Wisconsin Rapids. And fall is enrollment season. So if you have young people um, that you would like to see just kind of explore their own interests, discover new interests, and, um, you know, work with caring adults, build friendships with peers, um, you know, that whole age range. Mm -hmm. Look into 4-H. I would love to talk with you more about how your family could find a fit in 4-H. It was a fantastic fit for my family. I volunteered myself into a new career, right? This is not a program that I came through as a child, but it absolutely was a program that I wanted my children involved in. And it has paid dividends. I look at my children now and I contribute a lot of their skills, their abilities, their strength. Um, The pride that I have in them are things that they developed through Mm -hmm. their 4-H experiences. Um, So... (laughs) I know I work for the program. I'm getting paid for this, but I really, from a personal, you know, yeah. parent 
voice that mm -hmm. is from where I speak right now. Uh -huh. um, I recommend it for everybody. And I also want to say that we talk about special groups. So youth with special needs, whether they're physical, cognitive, development, they are welcome in 4-H and we have programs for them. Um, we have programs for the kids that are incredibly shy all the way up to those who are, you know, <laughs> explosively yeah. social. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yeah. well put, yes, yeah. And like everything in between. So um, uh, homeschool families, public school families, parochial school families, right? Everybody all is welcome above. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, And, and uh, the, these programs, these things that are involved, you get your kid involved in these in 4-H, and you just never know what spark might be uh, created from it. Um, yeah. Appreciate the time so very much mm -hmm. and deeply appreciate all the work you guys are putting into our youth, into our communities. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Olga, if people want to know more about the program or, or, or talk with you about it at all, mm -hmm. how can they reach you? Yeah, so I can share my email. It's olga.mesa, M-E-Z-A, at WISC, W-I-S-C, dot E-D-U. And Laura, how about for you? So my email address is laura.huber at WISC dot edu and i would also invite everybody to follow us on our facebook page that's one of the places where we have a lot of our um upcoming reminders of the programs that are coming on and everything like that and um it is wood county 4h comma uh wi <laughs> yeah yeah uh 4h.extension.wisc.edu is the other email you can go to but if you type into your search bar uh, uh wood county 4h or wisconsin 4h or extension 4h any of the above it you will find it encourage you to follow them on social media as well as laura was saying uh, thank you both again so much for the time appreciate you fantastic thanks james, thanks, james. We'll, we'll be back with more midday magazine right here at 97.5 fm 1320 am wfhr we are locally grown radio